All righty. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's Perium Tuesday Night Call. Leslie Zan here. Happy to be with you. As always, it is Tuesday, January 26, and we've got a really good call for you this evening. And before I introduce my special guest, let me go ahead and lay a little bit of groundwork, and then I'm going to chat with her a little bit, and then I'm going to let her do her thing. First, I just want to give you the theme for tonight. Our theme is balance. Okay, so put in the chat, when you think of balance in terms of your Purium business, what comes to mind when we talk or you hear the word balance, right? What are the first things you think about balancing when family and business, product and business, customers versus brand partners, work and life, time, family, business, your life and your purpose, time management and prospecting, school business, husband, self-care, fun and fun and fun. Yep, I need it. We got to find the balance, time management, on and off times, work and life, customer versus brand partners, management mode versus prospecting, spiritual business, life purpose, organization, Yep, lifestyle and purpose. These are all really good, smart, my friends. Purpose and inspiration versus financial freedom. Personal development versus mindset. Oh, y'all are bright. Those are all good. All right, well, this is the path we want to drive down in this topic. And I have a sneaking suspicion that this is going to be the first of two calls with my friend this evening. So, I want to introduce Crown Leader Seema, who is my special guest this evening, architect goddess. Seema, come on the call, my friend, and say hello. How are you? Hi, Leslie. Hi, everyone. Nice to see all these faces. We're happy to see you, my friend. All right. So Seema and I were kicking around balance. And the first things that came to mind for me were, you know, business and product was an obvious balance. Work-life balance makes a lot of sense. Um, oh, what other? There was, um, oh, my the balance between how much effort we put on social media and how much effort we put into face-to-face -face prospecting. So there's all these different roads we can go down in terms of balance. And tonight, Seema is gonna take two roads. And then I have a, 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 I'm very confident that we're gonna come back together again and go down a couple of other roads. But the two roads we're gonna to take tonight is the balance between products and business, which is the fundamental balance of creating success in this business. And then we're gonna chat a little bit. And then we're gonna talk about the balance of having fear or discomfort, or maybe stretching, or learning new things. So fear and taking action anyway. That balance, which is going to be a really powerful conversation. So with that as the introduction, I'd like to welcome you to the call. Seem it's always a pleasure to work with you, my friend. I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much, Leslie. And I'm so excited to share this knowledge with you all because I, I love to talk about fear <laughs> and uh, limiting beliefs and all that kind of stuff. And also, you know, keeping a balance between selling products and enrolling brand partners, because this is how we create momentum in our business and, and we can achieve that long-term vision. So as Leslie said, we're going to break it down in two parts. Uh, so the balance between selling products and enrolling brand partners, super important. We get this. And I was kind of the product sales girl <laughs> when I joined Purium. I was in love with the products. And how many of you guys love the products, right? Like 100% of us. You can drop a one in the chat. It's really all of us. And uh, since our products are so powerful, uh, we can't stop talking about them and we start selling and selling and selling and it's important that we understand that many people think that the selling comes before the prospect buys okay and the sponsoring comes after the prospect buys uh, so i really want to um de de describe the dis the distinction between the two because there's a big difference and it can have a huge impact in the long-term results of our business so 
just to get started, you know, selling. We can't stop about our products. We, we're trying to get anyone to try the products, right? We want everybody to consume the superfoods. We don't really qualify anyone. Everybody needs to have this. It's got to be in every single house. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're already healthy, if they're not. We are going to sell products to absolutely everything that can eat. <laughs> At least that, that was like my intention, right? Uh, even my dog, right? Everything that I can eat that I come across needs to have these superfoods. And we use a lot of hype. You know, we start with our Walmart market. You know, we try to get our parents, our partner. Um, we try to get everyone. And sometimes we use guilt in order to do that, right? Because I always say we are all expert manipulators. <laughs> we like to get our way. And uh, we try to make it look easy for, for everything because we just want to get as many customers as possible. Uh, I found I was that person with that mindset. And uh, when... I found in my experience that when I did a lot, a lot of selling, I got a lot of attrition. You know, I created a lot of resistance in my network because now I no longer was asking them how they were doing, how's your kid? It's like, did you try the, pro did you try the products, <laughs> right? We just become this person that can't stop talking and we start to turn off our audience. You know, like, oh, there she comes again. She's gonna try to sell me that cleanse. There she comes again. And when we sell and sell and sell and we just keep selling, we start to create that resistance. And we know that we all hate to get our ego get hurt. And that happens because we're in the business of being vulnerable and being rejected on a daily basis because we are entrepreneurs. So it, it can be frustrating at times. And we figure that, you know what, the best thing is just to keep selling. We just fall in the strap of selling products and selling products. And really it doesn't create duplication. We all know, and I have, I make some simple graphics with my markers, with my team. And I'm like, you know, you wanna be this product sales person that just keeps selling. I don't think I have it right here, but I wanted to show you guys because this works really effect effectively, right? Like Maria, she's just selling products all day, all, all selling products. We all fall into this category when we're chill selling and it's really not creating this, right? This duplication and that this is what we want because this is what creates uh, longevity, you know, network marketing. So going from this to this, we have to learn how to sponsor and, and sponsoring and listen to me, I'm saying sponsoring, not recruiting. Okay. So there's a difference between sponsoring and recruiting. And when we sponsor, it really takes the long-term mind vision. We need to qualify the people that we work with. This is the beauty. Leslie just said that on the opportunity call right before this one. She got to pick who she worked for. And we all have that power to qualify who comes into our team. Is this person willing? Is this person hungry? Is this person coachable? Like, do I really want to work with this person? Because I'm going to be talking to her every single day. I hope that you guys talk to your, your new brand partners every single day, right? The, the first 30 days are the most important. So we need to qualify our, our brand partners, our new brand partners. We Instead of convincing them and manipulating them or using guilt or telling them that they are, we, we just are experts at all of this. <laughs> we need to do a better job into um, providing value first. Whenever a prospect shows interest, ask, our, you know, ask yourself, is this someone that I want in my team? Make sure you enroll the right person the person that is willing to go fast. And you must have that conversation before that even happens, before they even come into your team. We have a faster program. You know, I qualify people that come into my team. I work with people that want to go fast. Are you willing to go faster in the next 90 days? Because we start tomorrow and we got to hit consultant in 10 days. And this is what you have to focus on. So I had people that were wanting to join into the business. They went to Purium enrollment, they fill up the payment or the big dream, right? They had this big vision in their mind. And I literally stopped them, even if I needed the commission at the moment, because they didn't have the commission, the, the commitment to be fully emerged. And also when you are, you, when you're enrolling is super important. And I learned this from raw, actually, 
make sure your new brand partner doesn't have an unrealistic expectation about their short-term results. This is a long-term vision. You know, you can make money in your first 90 days, but you must know that this it's going to be a roller coaster <laughs> and you need to stick around for at least a year. So when we, when we start bringing brand partners, instead of customers all the time, you know, keeping a balance of 50, 50, now you have people that are spreading your mission with you, that are building your dream with you as they build their dream, you're building your dream. And this is the beauty about um, understanding this balance. And it comes with sustainable long-term growth. It comes with residual income. Orders, you know, selling is great. And it's even better if they're in smart order. Otherwise, next month, you're going to start as a blue little bubble by yourself. And starting after you did all this work and you want to start with a little bubble by yourself, that is too rough. You want to start with all the blue bubbles right here, right? All the red ones go away. So make sure you let them know also that the numbers reset every month. Because <laughs> I had brand partners that I forgot to tell them that the numbers reset. And then they're like, Sima, I'm back to zero. What's going on? Uh, so be transparent and, and keep this balance. So you start the month strong. Does that make sense, Leslie? Yes, I'm busy here taking notes. Okay, so let me go. Well done. Okay, so let me go over some of the top key points and, and do a little reinforcement here. So what you started off with the balance was something I always called the difference between phase one and phase two. And Seema described it beautifully. Phase one, you're that first picture, you and a bubble. <laughs> you all by yourself. Like phase one is when you become articulate and excited and passionate about the products and the mission, which is necessary if you're gonna be successful. You wanna move from phase one to phase two, as Seema said, to me, the definition of phase two is when you are just as articulate and passionate and enthusiastic about the business as you are about the products. And that's where you find this beautiful balance. What else did she say that drove me to note, to, I got, I have a page and a half of notes already. Sponsoring builds that long-term mentorship. Sponsoring is compared to recruiting. I hope you all took that note. They're really, you know, words matter. So as opposed to recruiting, she's talking about sponsoring, developing this long-term mentorship relationship, qualifying rather than convincing. That should have made your notes also, where she says she really qualifies. I think Seema, our UBT 2021, where we allowed, where we revised it so that customers can as well on purpose to your point exactly to help everyone learn to differentiate if they want, like we want this balance. So to differentiate if this is the, they want to enjoy the products and have no interest in the business at this point, let's make them a customer. If they indeed want to create a business then we're going to sign them up as a brand partner. And to see Ms. Point, that clock's going to start ticking and they're going to jump on that fast start program. And then the final note that I really wanted to reinforce was her passion around smart order. There's so many benefits for smart order and they're all for the client, like they're all for the customer to begin with, right? They, they stay consistent on their products. They get the discount, they get the rewards, they meet and exceed their personal results. They're going to be more open to referrals. They're going to stay on the products longer. They create that residual. They're going to give you, um, and, and the opportunity to perhaps convert if they start as a customer to a brand partner. So Smart order for everyone, smart order for your brand partners on day of enrollment, smart order for your customers day of enrollment. All these things create that, I'm juggling balls here. This is the international sign for ball juggling or for balance, right? This balance between products and business. Okay, let's put a five in the chat if Seema's notes are exactly you know what i'm saying how good this is all right so that was one form of balance here from a fact of between products and business then seem and i were chatting and i could feel her passion and it's something she and i share uh, is this balance of fear like having the fear and yet taking action 
anyway. Susan Jeffer wrote a book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And that's what Seema was so passionate about. How do people identify these fears and yet find the balance to work through these fears? So Seema, let, why don't we move into that direction? Because it's so good. Yes, uh, this is actually my favorite part. That's why I kind of ran through really fast the first part of the training because uh, I really wanted to allocate a lot more time for uh, balancing fear and yet acting anyway. So I'm actually going to break it down into two parts. The first part is going, I'm going to talk about what is fear. And then the second part, how to identify your fear and use it to your advantage. Okay. Um, and I'm so passionate about this because I think that once we all get through our fear and we really come into awareness uh, to our fear, we become unstoppable. You know, it's our doubts or limiting beliefs or, or insecurities that keep us where we are. So balancing the fear and acting anyways, this is incredible because here's the deal. We are in the fear management business. I always say, we, we say we work with superfoods, but we actually work with people. <laughs> we work with real humans that have mindsets, that have all kinds of beliefs. And it's our job as leaders, and you all here in this call, are, you are a leader. You know, you have a choice right now to be sitting on your couch or doing something else or being on this call, listening to me and Leslie. So it's our job as leaders to create an, an environment that reduces fear especially for our newbies, our new brand partners that don't know how to speak. They don't know how to talk. You know, they don't know what the spirulina does to the blood, right? That they don't even need to know all those, you know, <laughs> technical things, uh, but they think that they do. So it's very easy to fear overwhelm, to be freaked out and to sometimes think that there's too much in your plate. You know, when I started, I, I was practicing architecture. I was super dang busy to run a, a a purium business. I was like, a what? A superfood business? And those are the people that do the best. You know, those people that have a lot on their plate. On their plate. And sometimes we can just get caught in our thinking and and just ask ourselves, oh my gosh, did I just screw myself up? What did I sign myself up for? Like, I have to do all these fast start thing. I have to go through these modules. I have to do this. You know, it's just UBT. They don't even get it at the beginning, right? And then the fear kicks in and the doubt. So I want you guys to give yourself some grace and give some grace to your new customers, your new brand partners, and really enjoy and embrace the fact that whatever you're doing now is going to take you to a better future. And don't expect that it's going to happen in a moment. Just like if you want a six pack, you know, you're not going to go to the gym and work abs or eat lettuce one day. And then you wake up the next day and you're shredded, right? It takes constant commitment. It takes the muscle to have repetition. It takes your muscle to be broken down so it can build back stronger. That's how we grow our muscles. They have to break. If your muscles don't break, they're always going to take small. So don't expect that your big transformation, your big dream, you know, your crown, your it's going to happen overnight. It's going to come with a lot of experience and a lot of failing. Okay. So if you avoid opportunities to fly, you're never going to fail, right? Uh, so growth requires failed experiences. And guess what? Failure is feedback. This is my favorite part. Every time we fail, we learn. And if you're not failing, you're not learning. So just change your mindset that, oh my gosh, I just fell. This is awesome. Now I know what not to do. Oh, right. And the more, and Tony Robbins says this, you know, keep failing forward. And the more times you fail, you you switch your approach and you switch your approach. And if you don't quit, you're not going to fail. You're just going to keep trying. You're going to keep trying. So experiment, adjust, repeat, and, and know that fear feeds out of time. Write that down. I hope you guys are taking notes. Fear feeds off time. And a lot of us encounter this fear, or I, I would say maybe the lack of self-esteem. And, you know, that's a lack of, that's a fear about yourself. It's a, it's a, lack, uh, it's a lack of belief in yourself. And, and maybe self-confidence is actually very different. Self-confidence is a limited belief about your skill set. 
So really identify, are you having like a fear of self-esteem, a lack of self-esteem or lack of self-confidence? Because one is about yourself and the other one is about your skill set. And I would say network marketing is 90% mindset and 10% skill. Once you get your mindset right, you are unstoppable because it's only 10% skill. So change doesn't happen overnight, but it starts with you making a decision. And every single one of you guys are here, made the decision, as I said, to become a better mentor, to become a better mom, a business partner, whatever you, you know, your reason is, but realize that that decision that you made to be here is putting you ahead of all the people that are not here. How many people in your, not, in your team are not on this call? Guess what? Now you're going to be a step ahead of them because you showed up. So a lot of people talk, but they don't take action. And you guys have taken action. So I want to acknowledge you for being here. That makes you rare, you know? And I want to, before I go into really what fear is to me, um, I want to share a little story because we all know that our fears really start when we were children you know, or for, or some experience that we had in the past. So for example, me, I created this fear that's been ruling my life and it, it, it had taken power of my period business because I was always a tennis player. Ever since I was six, I, I played, I was part of the United States Tennis Association. I, you know, I wanted to get to the ATP. Uh, my dream was to win the Grand Slams. You know, I wanted to be in the U.S. Open, all of them, the Wimbledon. I wanted to be on the court. I was practicing in different court types. My dream was to be a Grand Slam athlete. And that was my dream. But it was always my, it was also my biggest nightmare because in, in me trying to get that dream, I lost myself in the fear of not making it and not performing. Uh, afraid of showing up. I was afraid of losing a match that we drove hours to get to that my, that my dad paid for, you know, bought me new clothes, got me a new tennis racket, paid for hotel for me to compete. And I felt all this pressure that fell on me because tennis was a one, you know, one player. It's not a team sport. It's just you against somebody else. And that's how I started to ru rule my life. It was me against somebody else, me afraid of losing, me afraid of not being good enough. And I never thought that could be a leader. Because in my mind, I was just never good enough. And what that did is that I started to be an angry person. <laughs> because if I would lose, I would be angry at my sister that was winning. Or I would be angry at my dad because whatever reason was in my mind. So the beauty about our team with Purium and our community is that it made me realize that I am a leader and that I have a greater purpose. And I want to know how many of you guys ever felt like that? You know, you can drop it in the chat. Like, when did you feel like that? How old were you? Because all of us here, we are all leaders, whether we believe that we are or not. And the only thing that we can control is our focus and our personal development. And when I had that realization, it's when I started to grow and I discovered that the secret to success is service. And Purium has helped me. Um, I, I use Perium as a bridge to allow me to serve humanity at a deeper level. And we all know it's in all sacred books. If you want to be great, you got to help other people be great because service is the way to success. And maybe your gift is different than mine. You know, we all have a different gift to give to our people and to our planet. Um, and you got you to gotta embrace that because your gift, it's your uniqueness. And your goofiness and raw talked about this a couple of weeks ago, your uniqueness, you know, the side of your face that you don't like, whatever that is, um, it makes you you and it, it makes you powerful because nobody else is you. And when I was able to really overcome this fear by working on myself, I realized that I, I can't erase fear. Neither can you. None of us can. And this training that I'm going to give you guys is, is not about getting rid of your fear because there isn't a formula to get rid of fear, but we can stop fear from controlling us if we understand where it is. And so our greatest limitations are in our minds. So just write that down because fear is convincing your mind of an outcome without the experience. 
when you convince yourself that something's going to happen before even doing it, you're stopping yourself. So your biggest limitation falls in your mind. And I, I'm, I've been uh, really emerged into the subject of fear because I feel that what, this is what stops me from my greatness. And I was so glad that Leslie asked me to talk about fear. I was like, Leslie, I just want to talk about fear because this is really what's stopping me and it's stopping a lot of people in my team. It's the fear of failing, the fear of not of staying the same. How many of you guys have the fear of staying the same? Drop a, a three in the chat. I have the fear. I still have the fear of staying the same. I want to grow. I don't want to go back. You know, I don't want to stay here. So fear, um, I learned a lot from Trent um, that he said, fear is the absence of three things. And I actually want to break those down for you. And I want you guys to, uh, to take notes because fear, number one, is the absence of confidence. Fear, it's the absence of believing in yourself. Obstacles might be present, but you're still there. You know, fear might be present, but you still believe in your mission. If your mission, if your why, it's big enough. So, fear—it's really the absence of confidence. There's two more, but um, this was really profound for me because application creates transformation. Just write that down. So when you repeat it, when you apply, that creates transformation. And how do you build more confidence? So. This one is really, really awesome. So repetition creates confidence. Say the same thing. Tell your story a hundred times. You're brand new. You're a brand new brand partner. If your upline tells you, make a list of a hundred people. And this hundred people is just going to be for you to exercise and how to find the right words to say. So don't look at these hundred people as I got to say the right thing. No, I, I'm going to repeat something a hundred times and I'm going to figure out how it goes. So repetition is the father of learning. Repetition is the father of learning. Repetition is the foundation of confidence. Do it over and over and over and over and over again. Listen to the recordings a hundred times. Transcribe what the leaders say. Write it down and then write it down again and write it down again. This is how I learned. When Leslie and Amy was doing at the Zoom just an hour ago, I was like, I need that video from Leslie. I want to transcribe everything she said. I'm going to write it down over and over again until I make it my own. And I want to speak like she does. So I'm going to repeat it over and over. And, and this is how we become great speakers um, by repetition. Every single day, repeat it. It creates greatness. It creates confidence. And that way, fear doesn't hold you back. So the second thing to uh, build confidence is detach your emotion from the outcome. Be, right before this, this Zoom, I was talking to Ra and I was like, hey, Ra, do you think my presentation is cool? Uh, this is what I'm gonna talk about. And he said, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, maybe I'm not gonna say the right thing. And I'm gonna talk about this in a moment. And he's like, well, did you just detach your emotions from the outcome? And I'm like, oh, that's right. I, I just wrote it down. Uh, I'm not detaching myself from the outcome of this Zoom. And who cares anyways? You know, you guys don't know what I'm going to talk, what I'm going to say next. So even if I don't say the right thing, you'll never know. Um, so detach yourself from the, detach your emotions from the outcome. The outcome is just the outcome. We put so much pressure in ourselves for the, Soon to be pretty. Uh, I remember when I started to do our, our weekly transformation calls two years ago with Raw, I would be, oh, Raw, you got to brush your hair. Like, no, you got to fix your hair. And I was just, I wanted everything, the lighting to be perfect, the flyer to be out. We needed to promote it. And that just kept, kept me small, right? Because I was putting too much pressure on myself and I was always disappointed. Like, oh my gosh, we just got a hacker in our Zoom. Remember when Zoom started to get hacked and stuff? I was like, oh, how is this? This is so embarrassing, right? I was just putting too much pressure because I had, I was so attached to the outcome and I was locked in, you know, I couldn't serve because I was too worried about how I was putting myself out there and how it was looking. So I instead suggest you guys focus on the people that you can help, lock into serving. Don't play it safe. Try to create greatness without taking a risk. That's really going to help you build so much more confidence. 
So number one, it was the absence of confidence. So fear is the absence of confidence. Number two, fear is the absence of courage. Okay. So this one's really cool because once I, I, I went to Landmark, I took a personal development course there. And one of the exercises was to make 50 bold requests in a day. And I was like, what is a bold request? Like, how do I place a bold request? And they, my teacher is like, I don't care what you do, but I want you to place 50 bold requests a day for the next seven days. And so I was like, okay. So I started with asking my niece, she's 10. And I told her, hey, um, Anna, if I buy you a book, will you read it? And I'm going to keep buying you books as long as you read them. Would you do that for me? And she's like, yeah. I was like, okay, that counts as a bold request. Number two, number three. So you need to have courage to ask for what you want, or otherwise you're never going to get more than what you asked for ever. So being comfortable or being fearful, you know, but that's just the absence of courage. When you're comfortable, when you're not fearful, you're not taking courage. And I, you can't choose both. You can't be comfortable and fearful. It's either one, you know, focus on the big picture. When the mission is bigger than you or the mission's bigger enough than the fear, then the fear will not be strong enough because your mission is way greater. So when your mission, when your why is so powerful, your fear will never be strong enough to stop you. You'll find a way every single time. For example, Let's say your kids are in danger outside. You know that they're about to get run over by a car or something. You are going to get out of your house. You're going to open the door and you're going to go grab your child because the mission was bigger than them getting hit, right? So always the mission rules and you need to be clear on your mission. So create a bigger picture for yourself. Leslie talks about this all the time. We had our vision quest 2021 a couple months ago. It's in the front cover of my folder. We talk about this all the time. It can be about your followers. It can be about money. Your mission can be about dropping away. You can, your mission can be because you love the superfoods. Your mission can be because um, you just want to get an extra stream of income. Your mission has to make you cry. That is what's really going to propel you to be unstoppable and for your fears not to have that much power. So your vision has to be bigger enough that there's no rejection, no doubt, no limiting belief, no nothing that's going to stop you. So if you found yourself quitting a bunch of times, then take a look at your mission. <laughs> because otherwise it's an obligation and it's terrible to work when you're obligated. I mean, I did the corporate thing and I did the driving to work crying and that was nasty. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of you guys been there. And you don't want it to become an obligation, but when you are mission oriented, it's just gonna, you're gonna jump out of bed. Like I dream period. I'm constantly, you know, getting out of bed and I'm like, oh, I gotta make it to two star crown. Oh my gosh, like what's going on? Like I'm dreaming every, I go to the gym and I'm like, I'm signing up the trainer. You know, this guy, he's becoming a brand partner. I'm giving a gift card code to this girl. That's all I think of. Sometimes I even forget about the working out because I'm fully emerged into my mission and, and you know, re, you know, retiring my parents, getting them a new home. My dad is a smoker, but I can't make him stop smoke, but I can work on releasing the root of his stress that causes the smoking and is him overworking. And if I can retire my dad, maybe I can make him stop smoking. You know, so you got to always go back to your roots and what moves you. So fear is the absence of confidence, is the absence of courage. And fear is also the absence of certainty. Okay, so when you are uncertain, fear will take place. A made up mind is the most powerful mind, as I said, everything. So I personally made a commitment that no matter what, I was not going to throw the towel. When I signed up and I made it to Diamond, and then I said, you know what? I'm gonna quit my architecture job because I wanna be great at being of service. I'm not gonna throw the towel. Even if it takes me another year, I made a commitment. Even if I didn't make as much money at the, at the beginning as I did with my you know, architect job. So some of us haven't fully made up our minds. If you're not fully emerged into your period business, it's definitely not a priority. 
right? And what you focus on is what you will feel. We all heard like, you know, focus creates your reality, but really what you feel is the actions that you will take and the actions that you take will lead to your outcome. So if you want to change the outcome, then change your focus and become certain of what you're doing. Because if you master these three things, you know, fear is the absence of confidence, is the absence of courage, and is, is the absence of certainty. You put together these three things and you work on them, and you are going to be super in, unstoppable. So I want to really move on to the second part. Um, Leslie, do you have any comments or anything? You're good. I think you're good. I think you laid this out beautifully, my friend. I say move to part two. Okay, great. Um, so how to identify your fear and how to use it to your advantage. And now I'm gonna do a lot of storytelling because I love this. Uh, so there's three fears that stop us from selling and from enrolling. You know, it's, it's usually, uh, I'm gonna talk about these three fears because I feel that if we really become present, we are gonna be hitting all the K clubs. We're gonna be enrolling, hitting UBT every single week. We're going to be on fire, your company, it's really going to double again and again and again, but we really need to identify this fear and use it to our advantage, okay? So it's all about awareness. Once you know, oh, here it is again, I'm gonna do this thing that's keeping me small. Okay, I am better go to the opposite direction. So the first fear is the performance fear. And as a competitor athlete, this has been my biggest fear. The performance fear is the fear of not measuring up to the expectations of yourself as well as the expectations of others. It might be the expectation of maybe you're afraid of not meeting up to the expectations of your upline, or maybe you said that you were going to go fast for the first 90 days and then something happened and you didn't even hit faster consultant, right? Because you didn't, you didn't perform. And this fear shuts down a lot of people. Uh, so for me, for example, when I moved to this country, I didn't know English at all. I didn't know how to speak. I didn't, I, I only knew how to say my name is, that's it. So I was, I was thrown into school and um, it was the first day of class. I thought that I had to wear a uniform that was khaki pants and green shirt because my parents said that that was the uniform, but that happened to be the uniform from middle school and I was in high school. So I went to high school dressed up as a middle schooler with the uniform. They even confused me. They're like, oh, the middle school is on the other side. And I was like, no, 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 I'm going to ninth grade. You know, I'm like saying it in Spanish because I, at the time I didn't know. I was like almost crying, you know, I'm completely like I was dropped into a new world where I didn't speak the language. I wasn't wearing the right clothing. I was like a disaster. Anyways, that is the first day of class. And the teacher asked everybody, I made this assumption, right, to get up and say their name and, and a few things about them. So imagine, I only knew how to say my name is Carolina at the time, right? Because that was my birth name. So I got up and I said, hello, my name is Carolina. Um, and then they're like, okay, so how long have you been in this country? And I was like, hmm, I don't know. And they asked me questions. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. And the whole class was laughing. The whole class was laughing. I was crying. I didn't want to go back to school. I bought a little automated dictionary when you put in the word and it translated so I can talk with the, with the dictionary. I created a fear of not wanting to speak. I created a fear of never knowing what to say. And this affect me in my pure own business because even up to the day of today, it's like, did I say the right thing? This person ignored me, but they saw the message because I could see scene, but, but did I say the wrong thing? You know, so this fear I've been carrying my whole life. I mean, even before from playing tennis to now, like everybody laughs at me if I don't say the same thing. At one point I was like, I hate my accent. I don't want to speak like an, uh, like I have an accent. Sometimes I will not speak because I didn't want people to realize that sometimes I didn't know how to speak. Um, and it created a lot of trauma because I was afraid to looking bad. You know, I didn't want everybody to laugh at me like they did on that day of school. So that was stopping me from sharing the opportunities. You know, it was stopping me from sharing the business. I had doubts. Am I saying the wrong thing? Um, and now that we all live so connected to social media, 
um, I want you guys to never let this platform feel make you feel less than. Okay, it's because it's super, it's we all tend to compare ourselves and comparing is terrible. So separate yourself from your performance. It has nothing to do. Okay. Separate yourself from your back office. Your back office doesn't determine your worth. Separate from yourselves, separate from hitting UBT, separate from how many faster enrollments you have. It has nothing to do with your personal evolution, with your personal growth. You need to surrender, let it go. You show up, do your best and separate from your performance that your performance does not set your worth, okay? You're not defined by your numbers in back office or if you're a diamond or a consultant. I have incredible great consultants that I wish I was like them. And they look at me like a goddess, right? So separate from your performance and write this down. Okay, impact over impress. I am not here to impress you, but to serve you. I am not here to impress you, but to impact your life. You're not here to look good, but to transform somebody's life. So I love widening your reach because it really makes everyone to do it anyways, because they got to get their points, even if they don't like their face, even if they don't look good, but they're serving. So it's the impact over the impressing. There's a major difference. It's not about impressing by your performance. You can have the best Instagram, the most beautiful high quality photos. You can have the best customer transformations. You can have whatever, but there will always be somebody not liking it. There will always be somebody criticizing. Like seriously, there's always somebody gonna criticize you and if you have a servant heart, then you'll give value. Is not to impress or perform, is to be of impact. Remember this when you do and when you show up anywhere, like how can I serve? It's not about looking great, but am I serving to my highest potential? So if you worry about the little things, about messing up, if you worry like me about saying the wrong things or saying the word words, not knowing the compensation plan, maybe you don't know the ingredients, um, then you're focusing inward and not outward. So stop being selfish. Who the hell cares if you don't look good enough? Okay, if your lighting is not good enough, your mission is greater than you. Your values, my values, the values of our company, we are here to give the world something bigger than us. We all come together to activate the collective to, you know, we are the evolved ones here that have the responsibility to activate the voice of those people that don't know any better. So get out of yourself. Stop being selfish. You know, and maybe I'm being so hard on you guys. And sometimes like yesterday, I was so hard on one of my brand partners because I was like, you're so afraid of sharing the business. So you got to go share the business a hundred times this week. And she's like, oh no, but I'm so afraid, but I'm so afraid. And I was like, you got to face your fear and you got to beat it to death. And if that's what you are afraid of, you got to go and do more of what you are afraid. Because only when you face it, you're going to have a breakthrough. And a breakthrough means to break through your own fire, a break through your own walls, break through your own insecurity. So then you can get to the other side. So get over yourself. It's not about you when we are sharing, when we're giving somebody the opportunity to be wealthy, to create a very lucrative income, when we're giving somebody an opportunity to eat organic every single day or to get their health back. Your mission is bigger, bigger than you looking good. Okay. It's, big, it's bigger than you not knowing what to say to upgrade or to sell a transformation or somebody or enroll somebody into your business. And if you think that you look good, maybe you're in the wrong industry. Maybe you shouldn't be in network marketing. You know, if you want to make it about you, then you're not in the right place right here because in this call, in this company, our mission is bigger than ourselves. And it's about giving. And also we are, I always say these, we're here to be messengers, not the message. Okay. Dave Sandoval is the formulator, not you. You don't have to break down the formula. There's the video A through Z on Vimeo, but Dave explains everything. He is the message. We are the messengers. So I want to move on quickly because we just got a few minutes. So the, uh, the, the fear of performance is number one. The second one is the projection fear. Okay. The projection fear, it's when uh, this is when 
other people project their fears into you. Okay. This is when other fear project their fears into you. How many of you guys are living in fears that are not yours? And you can drop something in the chat. Okay. How many of you are living fears that are not even yours? For example, my dad was so proud of me for becoming an architect. I, you know, at this time, I should have like multiple PhDs. I went to the best schools in the world, got full scholarships, over $300 of, uh, you know, scholarships. And I, I got into the Dean, Dean, uh, Dean's Lee's Honorary. I was like winning everything. I've always been a top student. As a matter of fact, like right before this call yesterday, Leslie said, you got an A plus, my friend, because I sent her my little script. And I was like, yeah, I always been a top student. Um, so my dad was always really proud of me for always performing very well. And the moment that I told him that I was going to work with Purium and I was going to own my own business, he said, oh, no, you don't own your own business. Dave and Amy own the business. And I was like, no, you don't understand. I own my business. And then they're like, well, you're selling weight loss pills. What are you selling? Like shakes? And he's like, you're an architect. So he was projecting his insecurities on me. So I wouldn't do what I wanted. I wouldn't have my vision because he wanted something else. And in that projection, it even affected me because then I was in doubts. I was like, should I really do this? And it took me a year that I was stuck as a diamond because I couldn't make up my mind because I was living with projected fears. My architect friends, like, what are you doing? Like, what is it that you're doing? You're not practicing architecture anymore. I was so embarrassed, right? Because I was living with fears being projected. So stop letting other people place their impossibilities in your life. Their fears are not your fears. Sometimes we get it from our parents like I did. Sometimes we get it from our friends. Uh, sometimes our friends that they didn't go for it because they didn't try. They projected that fear on us. Oh, you should not be on that pyramid scheme. It doesn't work because it didn't work for them. It doesn't mean that it's not going to work for you. And some of us are living with that projected fear because we're like, oh, they got divorced a hundred times. All my friends got divorced. I don't believe in marriage anymore. Right? Do you truly don't believe in marriage because other people projected their fears into you? So come in face with your own self. Do personal development. Find those fear, dig up the seeds, find those seeds of doubt, of limitations. And my, my, my master Kundalini teacher, he tells me, a seed holds all the knowledge of, of a wisdom tree. Of, uh, it holds all the knowledge of a tree. Yeah, so we have all of our potential in those seeds. We got to dig those seeds up and replace them with seeds of greatness. You know, those seeds of doubts, replace them with seeds of greatness break down the cycle maybe it's your responsibility to break down in your in, you know that cycle in your family create a new legacy for yourself you know now my parents absolutely love purium now they love it because i give them a, i give them a nice christmas present because sometimes i'm like dad what's your bank account number let me wire you some money so now they love they love purium right because now they are starting to see my greatness so you can still impact the world because again, it's not about you. You know, create an environment of faith. If your environment is creating more fear within you, then you need to get out. You know, it's like, for me, it was easy because I don't live with my parents. So I wasn't in that polluted environment when it was keeping me small, right? So I, I, I surround myself with people that are great because you become those people that you're around with. And for example, this Zoom right now, this is a safe space for our growth. You know, y'all listening to me and, and Leslie. So do this evaluation because in about 10, 11 minutes, you're going to be off this Zoom and you're going to be back in your environment. You're going to be back with your family, with your friends. So make sure that you evaluate your environment and are you living in a space full of possibilities or impossibilities? Because when you change your environment, you have the recipe for changing your life. When you start surrounding yourself with people that are powerful, that support you, you are going to be unstoppable. So be around different mindsets. It really is contagious, guys. See the visions, dream in them. 
you know, after this month, this Tuesday calls with Leslie, I'm on fire. Like I'm shaking. I can't stop. Right. I'm like, I, I got to reach out to hundred people. I got to make my list. Like I got to talk to, I got to follow up. You know, you want to be in that environment. You want to be in an environment that propels you to your dreams. And then the last fear, um, the, 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 the last thing I want to talk about, the, the last fear that stop us from really selling and enrolling and just being great, I believe, is the, the past fear, things in our past. The experiences from the past that keeps you from experiencing the future. So we allow things that happened years ago to keep us back there. Uh, so failure can teach you more than anything for success, all right? So to get all to really get over this, you have to fall in love with redemption. And um, I am a Kundalini yoga teacher, and my master teacher, my guru, he um, our training actually. I was super super excited, and uh, the first module in our training it was called forgiveness. And I said, oh, this is nice. We're gonna learn about forgiveness. I'm so excited. So. I want you, I want to share a little bit with you because your future is hosted by the past that you don't forgive. Okay. And that was my first lesson as a yoga teacher. Your future is hosted by the past when we don't forgive. So forgiving, I learned, is to give forward, to forgive, to give forward your past to your present, because you might be leaving 50% of your energy in the past. So if you want to grow something new, you have to have your full 100% energy in the present. So forgiveness is the act of giving your future the space that it needs to receive the income and joy, the happiness, the blessings, the success, the customers, the team. But you need to forgive yourself and you need to forgive everyone. Because when you forgive, you're no longer attached to the past. Imagine if you're leaving 75% in the past and 15% in the future. You're incomplete. You're leaving 5% in the present. You must be depleted. <laughs> That's why you want to quit every day. So forgive is the path to freedom. And when you forgive your past and you forgive yourself, like sometimes I, like I dropped a full jar of tea on top of Ross' brand new computer yesterday. It wasn't a cup. It wasn't like this. It was a jar a full jar, you know, for two hours, I've just felt so bad with myself. And it was an accident. He was a brand new laptop. He just got the MacBook Pro and I couldn't be present. I, I, I had to do some trainings. I got to get some calls and I was just so upset. I came upstairs. I was crying. I couldn't be. And then you want, and you know what? The only way for me to be fully present is to forgive myself. I don't care if Rod doesn't even forgive me. I mean, he, he did, but it comes down to me. <laughs> you know, I had to forgive myself because in my forgiveness, I was getting my freedom. So I, uh, today I actually spoke to my master and he said, use fear as a means of transformation, uh, transportation, transport yourself. Every time you have fear, jump into that fear. Like you're jumping on top of a dragon. Just pretend you're jumping on top of a horse when you're fearful and let it ride let it take you somewhere because you realize that your fear is friendly. Okay. And every time you have a negative thought, think of this negative thought as a rough draft. You know, when we had to take these writing classes in college or in high school and you had MLA format or, you know, IPA format, and you had to submit a rough draft and then you had to submit a final one, like a revised one. Every time you have a doubt or a limited belief or a fear, Think like, oh, this is just a negative thought. It's a rough draft. Let me clean it up, you know, and be more graceful with yourself because who you were then is not who you are now. That past that you leave trapped on that is keeping you in the past is no longer who you are. You evolved, you changed, you became more resilient, you became more experienced. You just got rejected a hundred times. That is so powerful. So there are three fears that stop us really from selling and enrolling brand partners and being great is the fear of performance, the fear of projection, and the past fear. So with those three things, I want to leave you guys um, know that 
If you don't quit, you can fail. And fail means finding answers and learning. Fail. I love when Leslie does what's the win, what's the uh, what's important now. Then I was like, oh, the fail. What's the finding answers and the learning? Okay. So if you don't quit, you don't fail. And if you are not taking action, then you're quitting. So don't say you still are working in your period business because you're not taking action. If you're not taking action, you just quit. And I learned this from Grant Cardone. He says, every single day, if you want to be great, operate like you are on zero. Every morning, wake up and pretend that you have no brand partner. You don't have a downline. Pretend that you are back to zero. All your customers went away. If every day you can run your, your, you know, your day, like you are back to zero, you are going to be building just as powerful every single day. So um, remember, the person with the marker makes, makes the money. This is something that I learned from another master. If you're not holding the marker, you're not making the money. And the people that learn to solve problems are the ones that get the biggest check. So learn how to resolve problems yourself. And um, you know that can change your programming in an instant. I wanna hold a marker. I wanna be hosting the Zoom. Um, so I think that's it, Leslie. That's all I got. I can keep going forever, but... <laughs> I, I love I it. Steve, if you could read the chat, there is so many golden nuggets. You like you were getting fire, you were getting preached, sister, <laughs> you were getting repetition of your words. It was so good. I, I especially like your comment on uh, or your topic on forgiveness. Um, that has definitely been a great life lesson for me. I've come to learn that forgiveness is for the forgiver, right? It sets mm -hmm. you free. So forgiveness of yourself. And I'm sure Ra has forgiven you over the laptop. You will just simply go get a new laptop. And I'm sure he has forgiven you for that. And um, I mean, just, there was just so many nuggets. The three types of fear, fear of performance, fear of projection, fear of the past. I mean, there's just so many good nuggets. So uh, I want everyone to just take this all. I hope like I have, I don't know, half dozen pages of notes here, all really good. And again, it was just what she was showing was the juxtaposition of this balance that we're always trying to make. Like all these fears, she gave you a lot of solutions for fears with the idea that the balance of don't get stuck in your fears but you learn the lessons to continue to move forward, to move forward towards your dreams, to move forward and expand your vision, to move forward and take action, to move forward and, and learn from failure, right? You use failure as a learning, right? I always say the same thing. You got two choices when you fail, um, fail and learn or fail and quit. And truly it boils down to your perception of failure in the first place, right? So, all really good. Let's give a um, let's give a ten. That's how good she was this evening. Let's give a ten in the chat as your way of thank you, Seema, for all this terrific information. And I believe we'll come back in another day and cover some more balance with Seema. And a um, couple things here before I say goodbye. I'm going to announce the winners. I have my presence of mind tonight. Who's going to win the 500 UBT points? So the winners for tonight's call are Brianna Rodriguez, Aaron Schwartz, and Robin Tala. So those 500 UBT points will already be in your account by the time you wake up in the morning. So congratulations to all of you. And I do want to make a quick shout out for next Tuesday's call. As you can notice with the caliber of leaders that have been joining me on Tuesday, SEMA tonight is a perfect example of that. We're going to continue this high caliber of training and topics. Next Tuesday, February 2nd, I'm going to be joined by Black Diamond Tevia Wisdom Jones. And we are going to talk about a topic that I feel, and Tevia agreed with me, that just doesn't get enough play. And I just can't figure it out. But for many companies, it just doesn't get enough play. And we're going to talk about the qualifying conversation, that conversation you have prior to enrollment, prior to sponsoring. That's going to be February 2nd. But there's other calls leading up to that. So you're going to have the Monday, February 1 call, 4 o'clock Pacific with Deborah and Amelia. Then we're going to have Tevi and I on February 2nd. 
And then there will be another group transformation call on Wednesday, February 3rd. So we have things in place to help you jumpstart your February business. Mamba forever, Jason. I even know what you're talking about. Yep, it is. Leslie. Here. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to add one more call. Tomorrow, Ra and myself are leading the mega Zoom transformation. Uh, oh, so that's make sure you bring your prospects that want to get, you know, an exposure to the opportunity, to the business or to the products. It's going to be very powerful. Ron and myself have been doing these calls for a little over two years now, uh, and we absolutely love them. So make sure you invite your friends and, um, and yeah, follow up after. Yep. Forgive me. Thank you. I like jumped right into next week. No, I, there's one more call tomorrow and it's going to be a good one. These group transformation calls have been powerful. So definitely when you have two strong leaders like Ron Seema, and again, these calls are not just for you, they're for your guests. So what's important now, invite, 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 and get as many guests on this call as possible tomorrow night. And Seema, I know you and Ra are gonna crush it and hit a home run as you always do. All right, my friends, that's it. So final comments, you've got a great biz up tomorrow night with Ron Seema. It's gonna be the 27th of the month. You're going to have four days left in the month. So remember the skills and the strategies to purposefully close out your month of January. January is the first month of the new year. We want to set a foundation as we move into what, in my vision for you, is going to be another record-breaking year in all areas. So as always, Seema, I want to thank you. You are always a pleasure to work with and all those terrific nuggets of information. I wanna thank all the listeners on the call this evening. It is always a privilege and a pleasure to be with you on these Tuesday night calls. I am so bullish on Purium. I am, if you could see your 2021 through my eyes, my friends, you wouldn't sleep at night. That's how keen I am for our success in 2021. All right, thanks for showing up tonight. Put what you learned into practice. Congratulations to our winners tonight. Ra, get yourself another laptop. Seema, forgive yourself because he loves you and it does, it's like not that important. And you all just have a terrific evening. And Seema, truly, you brought it home. You crushed it. We appreciate it very much. All right, everybody, have a good night. And I'll look forward to tomorrow night. Smart call again tomorrow night. See you there with your guests. All right, everybody, have a good night. Thank you so much.